On this episode... There's a lot of pressure on us today. Audrey and Alison rush to treat not one... When I press this one, stuff comes out of that one. Oh my God! But two kangaroos, traumatised and desperately ill after being found hanging in fences. How painful must that be? I don't know how he goes in the toilet, but if I know it's backwards. Yeah. This one is most unusual. Rescue dog Chance has a bizarre problem, but will Rob be able to save him? What the hell's this? Got another orifice. There are just fake holes everywhere. This goes nowhere too. Now there's lumps going all the way up there. And Scott's patient, Sugar Plum, is facing her second serious cancer scare. And unfortunately, there is some grief again. You make my Come on, there's your girl. There's a lot of pressure on us today because it's an emergency. Near Canberra, Audrey and Alison are answering an SOS to help rescue a young kangaroo found hanging upside down in a fence. Rosemary from nearby Possumwood Wildlife is first on the scene. When we are called out to a fence hanger, where you get this sort of tight knot in your stomach, you think, oh my God, is it going to be dead or have fractured legs? So some of them are just hanging in the fence with their leg almost severed. Once that animal knows that you're there, it will start thrashing. And you know the wires cutting into their leg more. They could dislocate the hip right in front of your eyes. It's very distressing knowing how much more damage they're doing and how painful it must be. And sometimes the outcomes are really bad. The girls are seconds away, and as they arrive, the badly injured kangaroo has been freed from the fence and is lying on the ground. This type is actually the hardest rescue. Caught by one leg, they can still kick with the other one. <laughs> and they um, <coughs> very frightened. We arrive at the scene and we can see there's blood all over the fence, the fence hangers under some blankets. The little boy looks like he's in a lot of pain. Okay, if I just give him a good. bit of sedation. I'm just give him a bit of sedation. Yeah, so mum jumps the fence and the little one says, well, what? I'm going to try and jump the fence as well. <laughs> so what's probably happened is that the mother's jumped over the fence during the night and the little Joey has not been able to get that height and has actually got trapped. And it's probably the worst case scenario because it's springtime, there's a lot of Joeys, there's a lot of Joeys on foot and that generally is what happens because they can't see the fence at night. If the wire has cut completely all the tissue right through to the bone have to be euthanized and sometimes we get them and they've been hanging there for a day or two and so the foot or the toe is completely dead yeah so it's 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 a shocking thing I, I really I find fence hangers very upsetting because they suffer so much yeah. Audrey and Alison must move quickly to get the badly injured Rue to the Possumwood Hospital for urgent treatment and you think about it in a human perspective that's like a two-year-old little boy that traps in the fence overnight in the cold. He's in a lot of pain, Can't he's in shock. Upside down. himself <laughs> upside down, doing damage. It's just, it just should never happen. It's, it's so traumatic. The twins are desperately hoping they'll arrive in enough time to save the traumatised Rue. Near Sydney, foster carer Paul has arrived to see Rob with five-month-old Belgian Shepherd Chance, hoping he can fix the young rescue dog's unusual problem. Good boy. When we first picked him up, he started squatting and peeing backwards. So I medically thought that something's up here. Hey Paul, good hey, to Rob. see you. How are you? Good, thanks. Nice to see you. Who's this little guy? Chance. So what's the problem, Paul? When we've seen him go to the toilet, Yep. shoots out backwards and when we look underneath him, it, it looks wrong. Something's underneath, it's just not... Bad man problems. Yes, exactly. <laughs> let's go and have a look. <laughs> Come on, let's go fix you up. Let's go see what he's got. 
I've known Paul and his family for a long time. They really love dogs. They have a few dogs themselves. They train dogs themselves in agility and obedience. They've even shown dogs, but they just love dogs. I guess all the other dogs are making fun of him when he wheezes backwards. <laughs> You've got to watch out where you stand. <laughs> they can get you without you knowing. Oh, yeah, Paul is a lovely, friendly dog. Oh, he's lovely, got a great temperament, and he fits in so well with all the other dogs. So, how did you come about this dog? He was a rescue dog from Blacktown and uh, we picked him up from the pound last week. That makes me so angry. Someone's bred this dog, you know, yeah, he a happy, healthy soul and dumped him because he has problems. Because he's got medical problems here, they couldn't deal with Whoever it. So did him. that, I am so angry at. So Charles was found in the pound with no microchip, nothing at all. It shows me that the breeder knew that this dog had this problem. They brought this dog into the world and took no responsibility for it and yet he's suffering now. Let's have a look at your man problems, buddy. Uh, okay. So he's had some surgery. Yeah, when he was at the pound, yeah. they actually removed one of his testicles. Apparently the other one is undescended. So they removed the testicle they could see and left the other one uh -huh. inside. If Chance's missing testicle is left inside his body, the risk of cancer and chronic illness is extremely high. This is very unusual. I don't know how he goes in the toilet, but it, I know it's backwards. Yeah. Like every one of these is so unusual, and this one is most unusual because yeah. the penis is actually good boy. inside good boy. some of the, the skin. It can't be good. No, it's all, the whole penis is in one big adhesion. Hypospodiasis, they're often urinating from a hole, not at the tip of the penis. In fact, there's usually a hole further down. I don't know if this dog has that problem or not yet. It's a really difficult case. I'm afraid this is a surgical case, no, no doubt about it. Okay. Um, whether he'll get to keep his penis or not, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, so usually they don't. Yeah. yeah. Usually they don't. Well, okay. I often have to take that penis out. It well, depends on what, what we find in there. And it's will affect him going to the toilet? Eventually, they can be incontinent with this sometimes, where okay. they just you know, dribble urine out yeah. when they don't mean to. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a possibility. Okay. So we'll have to deal with that Cross through up. his life. We will have to do major surgery. We're going to have to open up this area and see whether we have to maybe amputate the penis. Maybe not. We might be able to get away with it in this case. Take him down, get him admitted. Just to get him through this, it's going to be quite a lot of work. All right. In Isleworth, cat lover Angela and her daughter Emma are enjoying some cuddle time with their beloved rescue cats. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to sit down? You can. Yes. Well, oh, there you are. Over the years, I've probably fostered 40 or 50 cats. People say, why do you do it? And I can only say, well, I have to rescue all the cats in the world. That is my mission. Emma agrees with the whole principle of rescuing any animal in trouble. Of all their cats, 12-year-old Sugar Plum has faced the greatest battle to survive. Sugar Plum came with her two kittens and settled in and she was a very good mother. That's probably 10 years ago, isn't it, Emma? Three years ago, Sugar Plum was diagnosed with breast cancer. Scott removed several malignant lumps and gave the rescue cat just months to live. Scott warned us that it might come back. He couldn't believe it when I took her back a year later and she was still with us. But this plucky survivor's luck may have just run out. I'm so sorry. Sadly, Sugar Plum has developed more life-threatening lumps on her breast. I don't want to lose her. She's so such a lovely cat. We would really miss her. Yeah. So, Scott will look after you. Yeah. Many times we've been here. Having beaten the odds once, Angela and Emma are bringing Sugar Plum back to Scott, hoping for another miracle. Okay. I'm a little bit worried, but we've been here before and I'm just hoping that it's okay again. 
Hello, ladies. Hello, Scott. How are you doing? Emma. Good. Great to see you. Yes, here she is, waiting Hello, for your girl. attention. Hello, my love. How are you? She's surprisingly calm, actually. But... Yeah. All right. Well, should we go into the console room and have a chat? Yeah, sure. Lovely. Shall I take baby? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Come on, then. And you take... I've had practice of this. Yeah. Lots have of practice. You? Lots of practice. <laughs> Today, Angela and Emma have brought Sugar Plum to see me because unfortunately it seems that the cancer's back. Hello, my beautiful girl. Hello. There's a number of lumps on her tummy that would suggest that these tumours have returned. So this has given us some grief before. Mm, yeah. And unfortunately, there is some grief again. She before had had a mastectomy, I suppose. Yes. It? So her right breast tissue, has gone, but the left is still there. But now there's lumps going all the way up there. Now it might not necessarily just spread locally, but also to other places of the body. And that's where we are concerned mm. about her longevity. You yeah. Know. Unfortunately for Sugar Plum, she had some lumps that Andrew had picked up. And here we are three years later, back in exactly the same situation. It is pretty heartbreaking. You said, you know, she probably hasn't got that long. I think yeah, it was you. Two years ago. Yes. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Luckily I was very wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Angela is a crazy cat lady, not because she's crazy, but she's crazy about her cats. She absolutely loves caring for them, rescuing them, and these cats just want to live. I got in trouble the other day for calling you a crazy cat lady. I know you weren't in trouble. I, in fact, I'm quite proud of it. <laughs> I'm sure that's me he's talking about. Yeah. He's talking about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Angela's passion inspires Scott once again to help Sugar Plum overcome her new battle. Today, the plan is uh, x ray her chest. If everything looks clear, then we will basically perform that second mastectomy. So she'll be a double mastectomy yeah. lady. X-rays are important in tumour patients in that we want to see has the tumour spread elsewhere. And in the case of breast cancers, they can sometimes spread to the small blood vessels in the lungs. If you find something in the chest, you obviously you won't go ahead with the mastectomy. That's right, That's yeah. Right. In the end, um, because it just doesn't further us, it doesn't no. improve her chances of further life. No. We'll go through it together, hand in hand, and just see how, how we get on. But you know, she's battled through the last two years and yeah. hopefully she's got a couple yeah. more in her yet. Yeah. Yeah. That spirit, you know, that life spirit or whatever you would call it, is, is very strong. I mean, she looks all delicate and sweet and tiny, doesn't she? But she must be a toughie underneath. Now be a good girl for Scott, won't you? Be a good girl, yeah. See ya. Bye, then. Bye, Bye ladies. Bye. 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 <laughs> As Scott prepares to x-ray Sugar Plum, he's trying to stay optimistic. Yeah. X-ray. <laughs> Praying. <laughs> Come on. No tumours. If a mammary tumour is spread to the lungs, then you know, unfortunately, that that patient is terminal. And performing a surgery to remove a mass means you're not fixing the problem. So therefore, you don't put them through that surgery. If the chest has got something in it that's alarming, then she probably won't last very long. We've given him a pre-med, so he's ready to go, aren't you, darling? Sure, all right, Bubba. Near Sydney, Rob is about to perform risky surgery on rescue dog Chance to try to correct the five-month-old's bizarre abnormality. Belgian Shepherds, you've got to be careful, especially when they're thin, they have no fat to redistribute the anaesthetic, and it really becomes a critical care case in the anaesthetic. Giving them the right dose is absolutely paramount, otherwise you could kill them. We've given him his induction dose, and now we're lowering the gases. We've stabilised him and we'll start preparing the area for surgery. Every one of these cases is an individual. There's no textbook on how to approach these. It's difficult because I don't know what I'm going to find. Does he have just true hypospadiasis or is he a true hermaphrodite, which is a dog that has both male and female organs? I don't know yet. I won't know till we get in there and investigate the whole condition for him. So somehow he's urinating out of this little hole here. So I think it's that thing there is where the urine's coming from and that would be shooting in that direction towards the back and the penis is wrapped up 
in all this tissue. My hope for the surgery is that he can urinate normally, whether that's through a penis or whether we have to remove the penis and form an artificial vaginal area for him. I don't mind either of them, as long as he's not incontinent through life. I don't know where that hole goes to. I think it's a blind hole. We'll put a catheter down to see if it goes anywhere. This orifice goes nowhere. What the hell's this? Got another orifice. Gosh, there's fake holes everywhere. This goes nowhere too. How he ever lived as a baby is beyond me. Tough little dog, you deserve someone having a go for you, Bubby. Let's get into him. If the chest has got something in it that's alarming, then she probably won't last very long. <laughs> Praying. <laughs> Come on, no chinners. In Osworth, Scott is x-raying sugar plum to see if the 12-year-old is suffering a recurrence of breast cancer. It's looking pretty promising, which is a medical miracle, really. <laughs> I don't know how this cat is still going strong after a diagnosis which suggested that she should not be here. We've taken three x-rays and there isn't any evidence of metastases or spread of the tumour, so it's very good news. The sugar plum but it does mean now she has to go through a fairly significant surgery. It's a massive relief that I can't see any evidence of tumours in Sugar Plum's chest. I don't know how she's done it. This cat's got nine lives or maybe even more. It's amazing. Although Scott's confident he can go ahead with surgery on the elderly cat, he quickly discovers he faces a massive challenge. So a little bit of a complication. We can see very clearly now the hairs off where the previous surgery was. Unfortunately, there's lumps present on that side as well. So not only am I going to have to remove the mammary tissue on the right side, but I'm also going to have to take a decent chunk around there. So I'm going to be removing a lot of cat today. And the biggest issue with that is then working out how exactly you close it. Because there's no point in removing something if you're left with a big gaping hole that you can't close. See on the other side, gorgeous. This is around about the length of the incision, so you can see it, well, it's more than half of the whole cat. These are the type of tumours that will spread very rapidly, so we actually have to remove some kind of margin, so we have to take tissue around the outside. She's going to lose a significant amount of body weight in this procedure. It is quite daunting when you have such a massive incision. I'm removing tumors from the full length of the cat's body. And when you're the surgeon causing such destruction to this beautiful little fragile creature, it is an upsetting process to go through. Right. Right. So the tumors are now out. And now I have the monumental task of trying to stitch this cat back together again. When you get to this stage, you kind of go, there's no turning back, but it's, yeah, so how am I going to get this cat to come back together? Can I have about 100 metres worth of suture material, please? Right, see you next week. <laughs> In Sydney, Kate is on her way to see one of her regular patients, two and a half year old Jerry. And she's in for a noisy reception. Hi. Hello. How are you? Have you been a good boy? You have. What are you doing here, Dr. Kate? I'm getting Dr. Kate out to see Jerry today because I really have exhausted all other options. I am utterly exhausted. I cannot continue like this anymore. What are you doing here, Dr. Kate? I thought you were supposed mm. to only be at the vet clinic. But no. Oh, no. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry so much. Anne-Marie got Jerry when he was just eight weeks old. but her adorable baby has become a constant nightmare. Jerry's anxiety has gotten to the point where it 
quite literally can't even take the rubbish down to the bin. I can't leave. I can't go out. I have to have people come and babysit him if I want to go anywhere where he can't come. So Anne-Marie, what's been going on? His anxiety has just gotten to the point now where I can't cope anymore. He is just really anxious all the time, but also I can't leave him. Right. Even for a moment. <laughs> How can you tell that he's anxious? Like, what does he do? He'll howl, right. he'll cry, mm-hmm. he'll bark. It is completely Bad. impacting the way I live my life, okay. yeah. <coughs> it is a nightmare at the moment. Even the thought of having to leave just stresses me out. And I have to completely adjust my entire life according to his needs. <coughs> In. It's okay. I've tried everything, dog trainers over the last two years, meditation music. I leave him treat toys that take him sometimes 30, 40 minutes to get through. He'll still do it. Nothing's really worked. It's okay, baby. And does he stop? No. Just continually howls? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. that's really something. I'm a little bit worried. I first saw Jerry when he was very little, so he would have been probably somewhere between about eight and ten weeks. <laughs> he was always a worry wart, and yes, he was more worried at the vet clinic, but I could see in Jerry's everyday life, with everyday activities, he struggled. <laughs> so it sounds to me like you've called me because you've tried everything you can possibly do without the use of veterinary help and you're not getting anywhere. Yeah, nothing's helped, he's still attached to me. Kate was shocked to see how bad the howling was in the videos and how long it goes on for. She understands where I'm coming from and it's such a huge relief. She believes me when I say that I've tried everything and didn't get a sense that there was any blame on me. So Henry, what I'd like to do with him is I just wanna make sure that he's okay, that he doesn't have anything like a sore tooth or a Mm -hmm. sore hip or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe we should have a look at you, Jerry, first? Kate wants to examine Jerry to see if a physical issue might be causing his extreme behaviour. Just having a little feel of his neck and just making sure he doesn't have any neck pain. He's got beautiful ears. Anne-Marie is desperate for an answer. It is no option to not have Jerry in my life, and I would do anything to find a solution. Oh, are you a little Velcro dog? Stuck to your mom? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If the wire has cut completely all the tissue right through to the bone, have to be euthanized. In regional New South Wales, Audrey and Allison have answered a roadside SOS after a young kangaroo was found hanging upside down in a wire fence. So we have to get this jury urgently to Possumwood Hospital. Which way do you want? Out this way? Yeah, just take him out that way. So we stretch the joey in straight into the surgery room and we need to stabilise him. We've got to get him warm, we've got to give him fluids, we've got to take some x-rays. So the best thing is we put him under general anaesthetic. So we pop some isofluorine gas and then tube him so that it's nice and safe and then we get started. And I'll get an IV access. It's not known how long the young Roo was trapped in the fence. So Audrey and Alison need to urgently assess his vital signs. Gosh, he's cold, his being assessed me. We get straight to it, we shave up the tail, look for the tail vein, we can't find one. 34.2, 34.3, cold. Come on, get warm, get warm, get warm. So this little guy is dangerously cold. He's been upside down. His blood has rushed to his head. He hasn't got much blood in his extremities. That's quite bad because we actually want to make sure that leg has a good blood supply. We know is injured. With the young Roo's life hanging in the balance, Rosemary pitches in to help, handing over heat packs. Yep, small one there. Eventually, the little Roo's temperature begins to stabilise and Audrey can finally locate a vein so they can start administering life-saving fluids. Just going to keep this foot warm and then we can start shaving up. So we're examining the injured leg and we can see that the injuries are quite severe. 
So it's a pretty nasty injury. You can see that the wire's kind of gone all the way around the ankle, which is not a great spot. You can see the exposed Achilles tendon, but luckily that Achilles tendon is intact. It hasn't been severed, which is absolutely amazing considered his ring bark a part of that area. But seconds later, Oh, I think I see bone. Audrey discovers a new problem. So it literally went all the way down to bone, sort of rubbed against the bone and stopped. It's just chipped away at it. It doesn't look like it's fractured. Can you see? It's just chipped away at that corner. We'll get an X-ray on that. The biggest fear for us is that he's fractured something. If he's fractured a bone in his foot, especially around his ankle, that's going to be really hard to treat. So it could mean drastic consequences for him. So that really warrants at this point to do an X-ray, make sure that bone's intact. X-rays. So looking at the side view, I can see the areas through the skin where the wire is cut through, but the bone actually looks okay. Uh, we'll take another view there, and then I've just taken a view from top to bottom, and that is also looking good. So I looked at all the ankle bones, um, everything's the intact, joint looks, fine. joint looks fine, all the views look really good, so I'm pretty confident that it's down to the bone, but it hasn't fractured the bone. So great news that x-ray is all clear. Even though we can see the bone externally, it's actually intact. He hasn't broken any bones. He's been so lucky, so, so, so lucky. lucky. So next step is examining the hip. We need to make sure that he hasn't dislocated it. He's been hanging by one leg and twisting around. It's a very, very real thing that could happen. So we do a couple of tests, a couple of manipulation, and again, another tick, it's still intact. And so that means we can go to the next step, which is flushing, debriding, getting a bandage on and just putting him into recovery. Uh, we got a special source. We've been dealing with a lot of kangaroo wounds since the bushfires and what we were finding once we got them through that initial period of treating the burns and getting it to heal, they get these nasty infections and of course because they're out in the mud. Uh, so we cultured a lot of those wounds and we managed to find there were certain bacteria that kept popping up, found the antibiotics to treat that bacteria and then we invented this special gel source. So they're going to be open wounds, which means that they have to heal over time by themselves. We're not suturing it close because there's actually no skin left to suture close. Pop some bandages on and he's actually going to heal really nicely with good nursing care. After his horrific ordeal, the little Roo is still not out of danger and will be closely monitored over the next few hours. And straight away, Audrey and Alison have another urgent case. So Rosemary asks us to look at another patient and this is actually an old fence hanger and we're really worried because there's these two big pockets of pus. She's actually seen pus coming from it and we don't know where it's coming from. Is it a piece of wire that's been left in there and now it's starting to get infected or is it a new injury? Oh, oh my god! The tumours are now out and now I have the monumental task of trying to stitch this cat back together again. And I have about a hundred metres worth of suture material, please. Right. In the UK, Scott has removed multiple tumours from cancer survivor Sugar Plum. Uh, oh, it's like a marathon, not a sprint, this one. Nearly there. Nearly there. Sugar Plum's surgical line is the longest I've ever inflicted on a feline patient. Normally you'd maybe do 10 sutures and you're done with her. It was hundreds of sutures, it was two staple guns, but I'm really glad that it's over. I'm relieved that we've managed to get all of that uh, malignant tissue out. So uh, we've just put on a cat baby grow and we use that because she's got such a massive wound. It's just trying to protect it, support it, and just make it feel really secure. But she looks very cute. <laughs> Let's wake up right now. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi, honey. All right, good girl, well done. Yeah. This is not a small procedure that she's been through, and it'll be a number of days that she will feel uncomfortable and sore. Infection can develop, so there's loads of potential pitfalls here. I am very hopeful though that this is a cat that's been through it once before and she knows how to get through it again. Beautiful.
beautiful. In Sydney, Kate is examining Jerry to see if the two-year-old has any physical problems, causing him to be super anxious. And Marie, has he got a good little tummy? Yeah, he gets anxious belly sometimes, uh -huh. um, yep. but other than that, yes. Owner Anne Marie is at breaking point because she can't leave her much-loved cavoodle for a moment without him stressing out. And Marie, he's in perfect health. He's got good little knees, good little hips. His teeth are perfect. There is nothing medically wrong with Jerry. So this sounds to me that we're not necessarily dealing with a straight separation anxiety. It sounds to me like we're actually dealing with a generalised anxiety. So where he's actually anxious about a lot of things mm -hmm. and it just seems to come out worst when he's not with you. Okay. I feel really sorry for Jerry. Anne-Marie has done everything for him. He doesn't come from a background of trauma, but yet he worries about life. So he definitely has a generalised anxiety. Those signs of anxiety are actually always present. Yawning, puts one foot up, licks his lips. And the reality is, is it's not Jerry's fault. He just does not have enough happy chemicals in his brain to keep him happy. So I'm gonna start Jerry on a medication that actually increases the amount of serotonin in his brain. And serotonin is a, a happy drug, means that he doesn't feel so worried about life. I promise you that these are not gonna change his personality. I would like to do a blood test six weeks after starting these, just to check that everything is going okay. I feel so relieved that Dr. Kate had a solution. After two years of trying everything, I finally feel like my feelings being validated. The thing I always knew, that there was something not right with Jerry. I feel like there's some hope for the future with Jerry and I because the way that we've been going just isn't going to be sustainable. So I'm excited and hopeful. Thank you so much. I feel like they're taking a massive weight off of my shoulders. Yeah. And you know, like any person that has depression or anxiety, this is not going to get him to 100%, mm. but it's certainly going to be really helpful. This is not going to be an overnight process. It's not like you can take a magic pill and then all of a sudden you're fixed. What we hope is that in the next, say, two to three months, that Jerry becomes a happier, calmer dog. Okay, Jerry, see you later, Gator. He's like, okay. Bye. See you later. Oh, oh my God. At Possumwood Animal Hospital, Audrey and Alison are now dealing with a second desperately ill kangaroo found hanging in a wire fence. This is actually an old fence hanger and we're really worried because there's these two big pockets of pus. After being rescued several days ago, this four-year-old grew has developed massive abscesses on her leg that need to be urgently drained. Should I slightly tilt it? There's a possibility that this injury or this infection could have come from the fence hanging. Sometimes a little bit of barbed wire can track up the leg and form a seed of infection. Pus needs to come out. Pus is always better out than in. It's just full of infection and white blood cells. Oh. Heaps of pus keeps coming out. And I think it actually even surprised me how much pus came out. And the smell. And the smell. That is not a good smell. So smelly. <laughs> smells like egg. It smells like poo. You can't smell it? I have never smelled anything never. that bad. I don't even know how to describe that. It's actually stinging my eyes because it's that pungent. And that pressure that it was coming out was like a waterfall. It was just a waterfall of vile smelling pus. How painful must that be to have that much pressure on the leg, let alone the infection that's going on? I'm surprised she's been hopping around at all. I need a new dish, guys. And then we also really need to get a sample. So this sample is really important to send off to the lab because they're going to culture and we're going to see what sort of microorganisms are growing there and also what antibiotics or what treatment we can give Bulla to make sure this clears up. Oh my god, that's a smaller one, the bigger one's up there. You definitely know the medical people in the room because as soon as anyone sees or smells pus, the whole room fills up. Yep. Yes, we've got an audience we've today. Got an audience. You know what's gross? When I press this one, stuff comes out of that one. 
as much of a sick fascination it is to watch all this pus coming through, it is at the back of my mind about how bad this has been for Woola. That pocket of pus has a tremendous pressure underneath it, so that's uncomfortable. Also on top of that, there's some severe infection going on. It might be bacterial, it might be viral, it might be fungal, but whatever it is, that is dangerous. It could go into her bloodstream, it could potentially infect her whole body, and she could die. So we get two full kidney dishes of pus. That is a huge volume, even for us as vets to see. We give that large capsule a, a good flush out with some saline. As long as we identify what microorganism is causing this pus and infection and we give the right antibiotics for it, she should recover well. We've also given her some pain relief, so hopefully moving forward she can recover and be released into the wild. What the hell's this? Got another orifice. Gosh, there's fake holes everywhere. This goes nowhere too. Near Sydney, Rob is shocked at the extent of the deformity in rescue dog Chance's penis. How he ever lived as a baby is beyond me. Rob's worried that if he can't repair the abnormal penis, he may have to remove it completely and try to form an artificial outlet for the young dog's bladder. Let's get into him. Anxious about the long and complicated surgery ahead, Jody from Belgian Shepherd Rescue has now arrived to keep vigil, desperately hoping there'll be a good outcome for their special boy. We're very worried about his chances today. It can be very risky. It's his second surgery in as many weeks. We're very worried about him today. So we have to prepare a big area because we do not know what we're doing or where we're doing it. Even if we have to keep the penis, if we can do that, we're going to have to reconstruct the whole foreskin. Let's see what we can find. So, I really don't know. There's this bruised looking thing, the shape of a testicle. Is it the testicle? I don't know. We're going to put everything in pots and get it analysed as much as we can. And we don't even know what blood vessels are going to them. You know, if you cut the wrong thing, this dog dies in no time at all. Gosh, any more problems you're going to have, little man? It's a fishing expedition. I want to be sure that there is no testicle left anywhere. That could be it. So I found a structure with, it looks like the remnants of the testicle. And we'll send that off and find out what's going on with this. So we didn't find any female organs. I don't think this is a hermaphrodite, which is good news for the pup. It now depends on what we find when we go to the foreskin. We'll open that up to release the penis. And then we've got to hope that we can repair that for him so he's not incontinent. So we've put that urinary catheter all the way into the bladder. What I don't want to do is cut off the main blood vessels that supply the penis. Otherwise we're going to be in trouble with that too. Gosh, what a nightmare. Hi buddy. At Possumwood, Audrey and Alison are checking on the young Roo at the centre of a dramatic roadside rescue. So we like to name all our patients in Possum Wood and because this little Joey has done so well, I think we need to find a fitting name for him. We'll call you Denley. I think that suits you. I think Denley has a bright future. His injuries, although they are quite severe, they're going to heal really well. Young Denley was found hanging upside down in a wire fence with nasty injuries and dangerously low body temperature. Miraculously, Denley had no broken bones and the twins are confident after plenty of TLC, they'll soon be able to be released back into the wild. Oh, you're such a good patient. Good girl. Go and call mum and nana now. In Isleworth, Sugar Plum is recovering from her enormous operation better than expected. It's actually incredible that she's even here. She's managed to get through yet another really long anaesthetic, huge surgery, and bright and happy afterwards, so she's a bit of a medical marvel. Got matching outfits on, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I hope she's all right, don't you? I'm looking forward to seeing her. Angela and Emma have come to be reunited with their much-loved miracle survivor. I kept thinking about her all the time. When Scott rang and said that, um, you know, the chest was clear, I thought, thank goodness, you know. Hi. Oh, hello. Here's your girl. Here she is. Hello. She's in the blue jumpsuit, you'll see. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, she's been such a trooper. She is a little trooper. I was amazed when you said that you could go ahead with the operation because yeah. I was very fearful that yeah. it, it wouldn't be possible, you know, so that's brilliant. We will get the results from the lab yeah. in a few days yes. and then uh, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, it's just lots of love, lots of cuddles. Yes. Angela and Emma are wonderful people. They've become friends. They are such kind people to animals and it's so great to be able to hand this beautiful little cat back to them and I know that Sugar Plum will make a full recovery if those two are looking after her. Bye bye. bye Thank guys. you. See you later. Okay, cheers bye. now. Bye Sugar Plum. Bye gorgeous girl. See ya. Gosh, what a nightmare. Near Sydney, it's the moment of truth for Rob who's hoping he'll be able to successfully reconstruct rescue dog Chance's badly malformed penis. Let's check this catheter. Yep, there's urine, so that catheter is definitely in the right spot. <sighs> Reconstructing this is going to be not easy, but I'm going to opt for reconstruction in the hope that that's all he'll need. Finally, after marathon surgery, the complicated reconstruction is complete. Okay, so he's kept most of his penis. We had to remove a little bit of that tissue. We've released it and we've placed a urinary catheter in place, which is coming out the proper hole. The reconstruction has been long and hard. I am very happily exhausted after a long surgery. The reconstruction took the longest, trying to release that penis from all that tissue. It was really enveloped, didn't it? It just couldn't get out. But I think he's going to be fine and have a good long life. So he's waking up quite nicely. No dramas with the anaesthetic. That was always a big worry. It's such a long anaesthetic for a little dog, a little Belgian shepherd. I'm happy that he got through it without a hiccup. Rescue coordinator Jody can't wait to see this brave little boy. Hello. He's a strong little pup. He's already been up and uh, he's trying to pull his oh, urinary catheter out. He's trying to put his drain tube out from his abscess. But soul. he's Hello, good, beautiful. aren't you, Chance? Hey? He's a gorgeous dog. He is. We were pretty nervous there for a while. We weren't sure that Chance was going to make it through the surgery. The anaesthetics are very risky for Belgian Shepherds, so we're so pleased that Rob was able to complete the surgery. The biggest part was reconstructing, releasing the penis out of that tissue that was all round and it was adhesed to the penis. Yep. Had to remove some of the penis and we've got a urinary catheter in, so hopefully he'll be able to urinate straight out, okay. straight forward. And what did you find inside? It's a boy! It's a boy, <laughs> so, yay! He's all boy, there was no um, lady bits inside at all. So I'm very, very happy with him, he looks really good. We're really pleased that he doesn't have any confusion internally. We're really excited that, that it wasn't as complex as we thought it could have been. It turned out really, really well for him. You can see it's all normal looking now, apart from the swelling of course. But yes. He's got oh, a, yeah. a reasonably normal it's looking penis better. now, good thank boy. goodness. Little man. Oh, this means the world to us. You know, it's just so heartwarming to know that we can help puppies like him have another life and, and a better life. It's, it's amazing. He's been through so much. In Sydney, Kate is returning to see Anne-Marie and Jerry to check if the medication she prescribed is starting to curb the young Cavoodle's anxiety. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Anne-Marie. 
How are you? Are you good? You are good. It's been two months since I've seen Anne Marie and Jerry, and what I'm hoping for is at least some little start of a change. So tell me, Anne Marie, do you think that there's been some improvements? Definitely, yeah. He seems a lot more confident. He warms to people a lot sooner, calms down faster than he had been. Yeah. And have you been able to leave him for any length of time? Short stints of time. Okay. We're getting there. Okay. Yeah. And are you a happier dog? You are. Jerry is a lot better since I last saw Dr. Kate. I'm able to leave him for shorter periods without him howling the house down. And Jerry, do you think I can pat you? Because I couldn't pat you before. Oh, well done. Good job. Well done. I think this is really going to have a massive effect on Anne-Marie and Jerry's relationship. I think the biggest thing here is not judging people when someone says that their dog has some issues. So we're going to start to see some more improvement over the next couple of months. Have you been able to have some form of a life? I have, yeah. Yep, been better. I've been able to get out and leave him. And you've gone on a date? Yeah, <laughs> successfully gone on a date <laughs> without needing a babysitter. <laughs> okay, that's great. I think the future for Jerry and me looked like us still having a wonderful relationship, but also enjoying our time apart. <laughs> okay, well, this is all very good news. So I'm going to leave you two. We're headed in the right direction. Continue. And I'm going to come back in a couple of months and check on how you're going. My advice to anyone going through a similar situation would be to definitely go and speak to your vet as soon as possible. My one regret is not speaking to Dr. Kate sooner. See ya. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. 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 In Isleworth, Scott has come to see if his miracle patient has bounced back from her epic surgery. Hello. Hi. Hi. How you going, Angela? Hi, Emma. Hi, baby girl. How are you? After surviving cancer two years ago, Sugar Plum recently needed more surgery, this time to remove multiple tumours. She had a rough few days at the beginning. Yeah. But course. after that, she's amazing and she's really keen to get on with her life. Yeah, well, she's done it again to better get through a massive she, surgery. She has, she's amazing. It's great to do a house visit today to remove the staples and just see how Sugar Plum's getting on. So sorry, sweetie. It's all right. All done, baby. Oh, well done. Well done, my angel. Look at that. <laughs> the news on the pathology results is surprisingly good. Oh, really? It is definitely still cancer, yeah. but the type of carcinoma that she has is very low grade. Oh. So it's less likely to spread. Mm -hmm. And we could expect up to at least another two years, but you know, I'm not even going to say no, that no, because no, no. last time I had egg on my face. It's quite amazing news. We were very worried. We prepared ourselves for the worst yes. news, really. But yeah, this is a big surprise. Amazing, can't believe it. She's just incredible, really. Such she a is, small, little, oh, fine, delicate thing. thing. Yeah, and um, uh, to been through as much as she's been through and still yeah, no. lives to fight another day. And after his life-changing surgery with Rob, Chance has now been adopted, has fully recovered, and is living happily in his forever home. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.